Hello, everybody. Welcome to another stream here. I'll be your host again. Okay, so I'm excited uh, for you guys all being here with me today. Uh, so I am going to uh, show you guys and highlight uh, an upcoming uh, patch for ZBrush, which is going to be 2022.0.3. So I'm gonna show you some things that we have done here for this patch update. This will be available to all registered ZBrush users. Uh, so you'll be able to uh, upgrade your download, uh, the full installer or upgrade your 2022 version to this version that I'm gonna be showing you today. Um, so then we're hoping to have that. We'll have that to the, uh, in you by the end of today. So you'll be able to get this patch, but I wanted to cover some things for you all within the patch. So number one, I'm just making sure we all got good, good video feed and audio before I start jumping in. And as some of you are saying right now, let's buckle up and take a look at what we have in store for you all. Okay, so it sounds like my audio is good. My video is good. All right. Excellent. <clears throat> all right. So again, I'm just going to cover some things that the patch that you guys are going to be able to have access to. All right. So we're gonna start some with some fun stuff here for me first. All right, so uh, Mr. Gizmo, always fun. So you have your uh, Gizmo uh, available to you. So you know my eyesight's starting to go. So you've got bigger icons here. Uh, but what the big thing is here, there is something that we added to the Gizmo just recently that I, a lot of people really enjoy, which is changing your focal shift to be able to adjust. So if I take on something like rotation now, like he can do a little this, but if we pull it out a little bit more, he's doing a little dance, doing a little dance. All right, right? So you have a focal shift ability now with your gizmo. And I wanna highlight just again, if you have the values in negative, you're gonna affect more of the mesh. If you turn your values more positive, then you're going a little more local to where the gizmo is sitting. So obviously, if you're you're putting this up a lot higher, then you can see now the difference. It's only adjusting pretty much from shoulders up. Now he's just doing a little shoulder shrug. Now, I know a lot of people have known about something like this that exists in the transpose line. So what we've done for this patch is when you switch to the transpose line, right, you've had the ability in here that when you hold the Alt key, okay, and we're going to switch to move, and hold the alt key, you've been, yeah, making the head dance now. Do, 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 do. So what we've done here for this patch is when you switch to transpose, we automatically will be having the focal shift set at zero. So if I go back, I hit the Y key, and you can see that of a different focal shift. So even if I do say something random like this, and I press Y, we will now default your focal shift back to what you wanted in the transpose line because I know a lot of people really enjoyed using that feature. But I want to also highlight to you all, don't forget that now that you have this focal shift ability, okay, you have, can use this, right, <coughs> to make sure that this is always at zero and then you've got different numbers in here. So that's one big thing. And for those that don't know, didn't know about the transpose, keep in mind that where you have this as far as the length of where this is, that's showing you see what actually gets affected. Okay, so if you're dropping this down even further, right, then I'm going to hold the Alt key, and you can see I'm affecting whatever's between this circle and this circle. All right, so again, your gizmos now will, can have a different focal shift than your transpose line. And I'm hitting the Y key to go back and forth between the two which is the same thing as coming up here and pressing on this button that you can see the icon for the 3D gizmo, same thing, okay? So that's one of the things I know a lot of people that use this will love to have that in the next updating patch here. Uh, the next thing that I wanna switch to uh, is the topology brush just to show something in particular. So when you're using a brush like this, I'm gonna make sure I don't have any subdivision levels right now, which we don't. So when you're drawing out curves, okay, and you start to draw out some curves, and my hand is super steady. <laughs> real steady today, real steady hand. So this is all about intersecting curves. Okay, so as I keep intersecting the curves, ZBrush is just making topology for us in the middle. 
Now, when you want to get rid of curves, especially in this case with this brush, you'll hold the Alt key and draw over. So for an example, right, if I want to delete these down here, I can hold the Alt key and just draw over while I'm holding the Alt key. And then that will delete those parts of the curve. Also, if I hold the Alt key and you just draw anywhere else on the surface, it doesn't really matter where, it doesn't matter how big the curve is, then we'll clean up and get rid of any parts of the curve that don't make up a polygon. And this brush will only allow you to make quads or triangles, okay? So this is just a way to clean up so I can start drawing off. Now, what we've done is we've added the ability to have a little bit of more power control here. So in the curve functions, okay, this has always had the ability to use this smoothing uh, ability. So if you clicked on this, the curves start smoothing. And what that button's looking at is actually the slider right below, right? So this slider controls how strong should the curves move when I press that smooth button. Okay, so I'm just gonna go a little extreme here just so you can visually see it for you all. So I'm gonna do an open circle. So this is, this is going to be here. I'll, I'll turn on my handy dandy magnifier. I'm gonna click this right here, go from a closed circle to an open circle. That's just making it a more of aggressive uh, smoothing process. That's what that is. And then obviously then this is just how more of a strength slider. Now, if you look say in this corner right here, if I go now and hit stroke, okay, and I hit the smooth, you'll see that corner, see how much they moved? If I hit it again, you see they keep moving, right? So you guys have had this ability to smooth the curve. So I'm just gonna undo these. So we're back to little squiggly squigglies. But now what we've got in this patch is when you're dealing with things like your curves, specifically it's nice for this brush, when you guys now go and hold the Alt key and start deleting curves, we're going to run that smoothing algorithm that's there, and we're going to be looking at this slider now to see how to smooth out the curves, in essence, how strong to start smoothing the curves out, right? So in this case, right, this curve right here is sticking a little further what's making the polygon. This is part of the reason why I maybe want to click this smooth button to make those curves start being a little bit more straight. Because again, this particular brush is only making polygons based upon the green circles. So in essence, based upon intersecting curves. So once again, I draw out a curve, I draw out a curve, I draw another curve, that's intersecting. So now you've got green and green, that's a vertex point. So if I draw here, I've got more and I've got more and now it's just drawing out. And then you're just going across this, all right? So now you have the ability that the Alt key will be looking at this slider. So it's just something that's going to be nice for you guys to have in there. I, I know myself, I use this brush a lot to make just pieces of armor and geometry for base meshes so I can move quickly moving along. So this is a, one, of, one of the brushes that I do actually love using. Right? And then if you hit, you wanna be able to see what you made, you just tap on the surface and ZBrush is automatically going to give you topology that's based upon what we just made and then it's got multiple poly groups right so if i look at this this portion now we'll grow it all out you can see there's a poly group there there's a different poly group there and there and also the edges are creased okay so that's what that's what this brush can do right a very quick way to start building some things out for you all right so that's something that's going to be added into this patch for you just taking advantage of those smooth sliders that are already there all right, so something else that we wanted to um, just enhance here for you all, I'm, in case some of you are not even aware of this, a lot of you have different workflows and doing different things depending on what pipeline you're in, how you're using ZBrush, if you're in the film, game, toys, collectibles, or medical. You know, ZBrush is used by a lot of different artists from a lot of different industries, right? So we've given the ability that when we import, okay, an FBX, Right? I'm not sure if you all are aware of this. You can now, when you import an FBX, and if that FBX has camera data, i.e. you've saved out the cameras in your other application, okay? So in this case, you can see this has saved out seven cameras in here. But in the ZBrush of today, 2022, we're also bringing in images, 
right? And then the images behind there are the images in this case that were part of a photogrammetry. So like, as you can see, there's an image that in essence, that camera, right, in the rig, that's the part it was looking at that made up to get this piece of geometry. So a lot of you are using this to do that. So in the draw palette is where you guys now have this possibility. So in this case, I just did seven cameras. So you've got four, right? And I can click on four, and then you can see the image is automatically being updated behind there. So I can even come down here. I can drop the opacity of the model, and you can clearly see through into that image. So a lot of artists are using this to match up images from the photogrammetry to make some edits and things like that, right? Very handful. So I keep saying this photogrammetry word because if any of you have ever done this, you're not doing seven cameras or even 50 cameras. You've got a wide range depending on the rig you're, you're playing with, right? Or in this case, you could, ICE can also use this for anything. Like this is a, a lot like a plugin that we have that's called Image Plane. That was a very popular plugin in here, which is a way to bring in some reference images. So you got to look at this plugin that we've had here. What I'm showing you now is now an expansion. So this FBX ability now of importing, we are now going to allow up to 256 cameras with their images. So like I said, if you're dealing with photogrammetry, your rigs are 180 cameras, 140 cameras, you know, 100 cameras. Or if you're working at somewhere where you've got a bunch of just, you know, you got 10, 15 cameras in another program, and you want to bring all those cameras in and then have all the images lined up, instead of using, say, just something like this, there's this now, which is same thing, same concept idea, but now we're giving you 250 camera capability storing. So which means is this can now, in this patch for 2022.0.3, you'll be able to import 250, up to 256 cameras. All right, so that should be really handy. I know a lot of users that I've had conversations with would find that extremely uh, beneficial and useful for them, okay? So that's another addition that we've done. And then this is scan data um, from 3D Scanster. So this is was not anything that I did, but I just was greatly used. Uh, ready to show you guys this. Okay, so another thing um, that you guys want to be uh, aware of and uh, be a part of, I want to show, because I'm not sure if everyone is also aware of this, but XMD, the toolbox, I don't know if you've all used this. All right, so there's also been some updating to the uh, toolbox as well with the XMD team in here too. So if you've never used this before, you guys can go get X, uh, Toolbox 3.0 you can get a, a free version of this, which comes with a ton of free brushes. And it's a great system for you all to even do tagging. It's a great system to be able to search for brushes. So in essence, right now, my system is just looking at the ZBrush folder structure. So it'd be like a little bit like the same thing if I came into here and I opened up Lightbox, okay? And I go to projects and I see all my projects. I go to tools and I see all my tools, okay? So what XMD is doing is that same thing kind of idea here, but way more for you as a user, okay? So you can click on things and see like, this is my material selection, these are my brushes. So these are all the brushes that are in my current ZBrush, the alphas. So these icons across here, you can see here's my projects and tools, okay? So you can click on the little icon right here and you can change the viewability of this. But there's a library, so if I click on my library, Right, and I'm just going to let this load and switch to free. So this is everything you get with the free version of the XMD. So this some really great brushes in here that you guys might want to take advantage of. But what also is extremely nice about this, let's for example, let's load another brush. I'm going to go into Strokes Two, and you can see here all these brushes are available to me. So if I say, oh, I want this one right here, I'm just going to click on that little cloud icon that we're all used to now. Checkmark says, okay, this has been downloaded to my system here, okay? And you can see this one starts with XMD, right? Mm -hmm. So now if I close the library and then I want to come back into here and we'll go back into the brushes, I have even a search ability. I can put XMD and you can see all the brushes that I have loaded 
from XMD are now here. So this is the nice thing about the toolbox. There's a nice searchability in here. And on top of that, there's a system here for you guys to add filtering. You can even tag stuff. So I can say, oh, I like this brush, this brush, and this brush are like three of my new favorite brushes. And you can see over here, there's now a system that you even create more tabs. And they have more maybe hard surface brushes, and organic brushes. And then with each one of these brushes, you have other items over here, put in descriptions and categories if you want to. You can filter out and just look at brushes. So I want to just highlighted this in the stream too, because um, we've also looked at, I know for this patch as well, there have been people that were trying to load brushes before anything was loaded in ZBrush. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that's now going to be also fixed within this patch. Again, this is a patch for ZBrush 2022. So anybody that is using the most current version, this is just going to give you a patch update to the version I'm showing you guys today. Right? So again, any registered user is going to be able to get this patch. Okay? So that's nice to have that XMD. Okay? So you can load that. And again... There's even shortcuts to load this. Again, to load that, it's in the file menu with inside of ZBrush right here. Open the XMD toolbox, okay? And then you got, like I said, someone's bringing up custom tags and everything that you want to do in here. You can have it in here. And if I want to load a brush, you just go to any one of these or you can go in there and you can see now that brush is loaded. And then we can, I'll go a little bit bigger with my brush stroke and start using that on the surface. Okay, so it's an easy way to load the things that you might want to use with inside of ZBrush. So it's a nice system. So I just wanted to highlight that as well uh, for this patch too. So yeah, there's alphas included. And then of course there's brushes that you'd be able to buy through XMD. So it's mostly brushes and alphas uh, that the system that they're making over there in XMD. But it's about, it's linking to ZBrush. Right? So it's giving you another way to look at your brushes, your tools, your projects, anything that's in those common folders that you have with inside of ZBrush, okay? All right, so, <clears throat> and if you're using an old version of XMD, I don't know if you're using 2.0 or whatever you're using, uh, go f I would go recommend going to their forms and making sure and see uh, what's the best way for you to do that depending on your system specs and depending on if you're on the Mac side or the Windows side. I'd recommend going to their uh, forums or hitting them up in their support because uh, we don't make XMD. We're just uh, obviously that's made by them, and now it just has the ability to be launched right within ZBrush, and they've made the newest version add more uh, ability for you to get a free version of XMD Toolkit with more brushes and alphas within the free package. Okay? So I'd, I'd recommend heading over to XMD. Uh, dot com to find out more information. So um, my man, Mr. Daisuke, is just putting a link in there. They are currently right now in version 3, so it's 3.0. All right? Okay, so there you go. So the next thing that I want to talk about in here, um, it's a little near and dear to my heart, okay, because I'm sure all of you that are watching the streams before, I've been loving me some hard surface, and I'm, you know, I want to bring up something even that we've already done hey, in the past because this was a how to do streams that I do. So this is one of the streams where I showed us all how I made this with inside of ZBrush. So it's on our channel and specifically you can go watch this on YouTube. But obviously what was something new that came out with this 2022 version is Bevel Pro. So I'm gonna launch Bevel Pro. I'm just gonna go with this little piece right here. And there's some couple things that I wanna highlight again. So Bevel Pro is already available to you all, but stuff I want you to be aware of, all right, is I'm gonna just highlight some polygrouping here. I'm gonna grab, and you can see this is a resulted mesh from a live Boolean, right? And this is sitting around 350,000 vertex points right here, okay? So I'm going to say, let me, give me that, that polygroup, which is that blue, I'm holding down control and shift and clicking on that. And then I'm gonna grab this one right here and I'm gonna flip this. So the only two polygroups right now that are seeing are these two right here, right? And I'm gonna come down a little bit here in the tool palette. And I'm gonna hold the shift key and I'm gonna click on masking. What that's gonna do for me is it's gonna open up the masking sub palette, but keep the geometry and the sub tool palette open. So again, I'm not sure if you're aware of that. It's been just sprinkling a little bit extra things here as we're moving along through here. 
So one thing that we added years ago that I use all the time is this mask by features. So by default, you're going to have these three buttons on. You're going to have border, groups, and crease. So because right now I'm only showing two poly groups, I'm going to turn off creasing and I'm going to turn off border. So I don't want ZBrush to look at the opening. So in essence here, if I turn on solo mode, you'll see I'm just looking at a portion of a mesh right now. I'm not looking at the whole thing, right? So I want ZBrush to also know that. So this is why I'm turning off the border option. And then the crease, I, if there's any creased edges in this, I just want them to be ignored. And I'm gonna click the big button right next to it, masked by feature. So what that's done is it's only now masking the vertex points along the poly, two poly groups. So I'm gonna bring everything back and I'm gonna inverse my mask, control tapping an open document. And I'm just gonna blur this once, right? And you can see only the vertex points right here are available to me now as far as being able to adjust them or do anything with them sculpturally, okay? But what we also have now is this is a hard surface piece, okay? And I wanna use something like Bevel Pro. So I'm gonna launch Bevel Pro and we're gonna throw this over and Bevel Pro is looking at polygrouping, but it's also looking at masking. So you can see this one sub tool comes over and now the only spot I am getting any beveling is right along this area. And if none of you have used this yet, okay, because this is available to you right now in 2022, any version of 2022 that you have, this is available, all right? And so what this is telling you is I can make a beveled edge, but now, what we have for this patch is you can do a beveled edge or a chamfer, okay? So if you're not aware what the difference is, I'm just gonna turn on bevel right now. And down here at the bottom, I'm gonna turn on auto apply. And what this is going to do is show me my result, right? So the key thing about this, let's remember what we're doing. I'm throwing something over that's, you know, around 380, I'd say probably around 400,000 polygons and trying to put a bevel around those polygons you wouldn't do that low polygon construction wise because there's triangles there that's a little bit more dense. So the idea here for this Bevel Pro is being able to handle meshes of things that we're going to do with inside of ZBrush. And in this case, I've got a little bit more dense mesh that also has been processed through live Booleans. And now I wanna start putting a bevel there. So do I want a bevel like this or do I want a chamfer? So I can click on chamfer and then now we're going to get a different result here. And so now we've got, in essence, the difference is instead of being flat, you got a little bit more roundness happening in there, right? So, and then the beauty of this is do I want that to be this large, okay? So I'm going to turn off auto apply because, so in essence, we're making some pieces of topology here for you. This is going to use live Booleans actually to give us our results as well. So I have controls here. This is also the other beauty part about Bevel Pro. I'm not at a point here where I can be like, ah, uh, I'm just sculpting across and then, oh, that's not the width of the bevel I want. So I'm gonna say, you know, let's, I just wanna see maybe if I go twice as big. So I'm gonna go 0.4. And so visually, so you can see what's pink, that's the bevel change. So I'm gonna drop my offset a little bit here, <clears throat> okay? And so where the blue is, these blue dots, that's where the two polygroups are meeting, right? And the pinkish, reddish tone, that's the piece of geometry that Bevel Pro is making. And then the red dots is where the bevel is going to start and end, or in this case, where the chamfer is going to start and end. So you can look and adjust this way. And then if you're happy and you want to see, well, what's that going to look like? You don't have to go to ZBrush if you want to see what that looks like. You do it right with here, and then you can say, ah, I don't know if I want to go like that. I think I want to go in between and switch that up and go in between the point two in this case and the point four in this case. And now it's reanalyzing the whole mesh, giving me that. And in this case, because I have auto apply on, I hit OK, and then that's going to send everything back to ZBrush and then there, right? So this is now what I have for this area in here. So let's go up a little bit closer and I say undo, okay, and I'm gonna hide the mask. So this is what we had before, right? So you can see the crisp edge that we have here. And if I want to, you know, come back and send this back into there, 
right? I would again, control the masking and throw it back into ZBrush, okay? So this is what I wanna have the ability to do here, okay? So there's some other things here that you need to be aware of for this patch, all right? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to a couple other things here for you all, all right? So I'm gonna grab this piece that we have here, okay? So it's another mesh, this one now as an example. You can see the result, it's got more than one polygroup through here. And then this one's got like a, not so dense, right? And you've got geometry here and geometry here, and you've got, again, some triangulated. This one, of course, is another result of me making something with live booleans. So this time, I'm just gonna send it as is, okay? And so I'm gonna go down to Bevel Pro. Again, that's in your subtools. I'm gonna send this, all right? <clears throat> We're gonna send that on over. And now we've got this, and you can see we are getting that surface once again going around those polygons. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit, and you can see that it's not quite the pink. You see that pinkish red tone isn't quite finishing up all the way. I'm gonna take a I'm gonna take a water break for a minute. The, the voice is raspy. All right, there we go. So what I want to do is fix this up a little bit. So that's what fixed edges does. Okay, so what you want to start looking at Bevel Pro is, is there's section here, okay? There's ways to look at, okay, fixing the mesh. What do you want to do with the bevel um, itself, okay? What kind now do you want? Do you want a bevel or a chamfer? And how you want, so for example, I want, in this case, you know, messing around with things like this, I want to be able to manipulate it and change this or switch to a, maybe a different result, okay? So the fixed edge, was allowing me to start fixing these items and start working on this. Now, we have some advanced options in here. So I'm gonna turn on some of these advanced options through here, all right? And we have got now things like generate inner topology. We've got smooth groups. We got triangulation, okay? So I'm gonna turn on some preview edges in here, all right? And so now you can see you can actually have a triangulated. So this is a bevel surface. Okay, so if I turn this off, you can actually turn it to quads. So this is important when you're dealing with the chamfering. This has got now an ability to make either a quad surface or a triangle surface, right? Because this is important. So if I cancel this, okay, and we come back, right? It's going to be when you come back into ZBrush, what kind of geometry do you want to have when you're going around this surface? Okay, so if I'm throwing this back in there, and when I start using this, okay, I want to be able to have some control. And again, here, I'm going to have to fix. So I'm going to turn off the preview. Okay, so we're just going to fix the edges again in here. All right, so I get some fixed edges. You maybe even add some smoothing through here if I want to have a little bit of smoothing happening with the surface, right? And maybe play with my bevel amount. Again, maybe go a little bit less with that bevel moment, maybe I don't want something so big because this has got convex and concave happening in here. I don't want them intersecting with each other. So I'm just gonna go a little bit smaller because we're gonna create both bevels here for you, okay? And so once again, I have now ability. So in here, I'm gonna turn on your preview edges, okay? And I'm gonna hit apply now so you can see the topology and what's happening in here. So you've all the topology in this case is being triangulated. So you now are gonna have these controls to do you want just quadded in the surface that's being made that's giving you your major, in this case, the chamfering, and then the intersection conjunctions are these right here. So that's what this option is. So you see that's now quadded in there. So when you're dealing with chamfer, there are other things that are happening here and that's giving you this strength. So now if I said okay, because I have auto apply on, I come back and you can see I've got the surface that I want, yes, right? This is what I wanted in there, right? Right, so this is again, before, after. So here's before, after, before, after, before, after. Now, but what's going on is you've got a new poly group and you can see all the topology is triangulated. Right, so this is what ZBrush used to chamfer that surface. And again, it's, the surface originally was not the cleanest in the sense because it was, had a combination of triangles and quads. Now, there's something else when 
we're sending things even something like this. There's something else that um, is being added for the patch here that's being updated. So I'm gonna go to something even just a little, little less extreme. And what I mean by that is it's super, in this case, it's pretty low. It's really low topology. So I just, I'm using this so you can really see what also was happening in that last piece that I did, because there's something else here that we had to do when you're dealing with chamfers. So I'm gonna throw this back into Bevel Pro. Let's throw it back in there, okay? So now we have this chamfer here. We're gonna turn off, let's turn off the previews, okay? And I wanna start looking at this and manipulating and playing with this a little bit more, right? So I can start maybe, you know, trying different sizes, seeing what I get here, right? Again, do I want to play with any of these connection points in here? Do you want triangles or not triangles? So now you have these other options through here as well, okay? So if I'm auto applying this, this is kind of what I'm starting to get. Now what we have here is a low polygon mode, all right? So there's a mode here that is going to be looking at this and making this, I'm gonna go a little bit lower. I'm gonna get rid of the smoothing completely here so you guys can really, I don't want any smoothing happening to my mesh. I want that, right? So I want every edge around there getting a nice smooth chamfering, right? So this is why I'm saying these features work together, right? So this is analyzing the mesh. What do you wanna do with the mesh that's being, you know, that we're generating, right? And <clears throat> this is now affecting that and saying, okay, I wanna chamfer, but I've got a low polygon mesh. So see, this is nice and clean. If I turn this off, you can see the difference in the result. So you can see this is kind of now coming around and being smooth here a little differently because it's a chamfering effect. So you're trying to create now an effect that's rounding the edges, but this is really extreme. And now there's not a lot of information, i.e. topology there, to understand this corner change and understand these corner changes. So if we get really close, you can see the result that I'm getting. So even if here, let's even up this, even let's go even bigger. Let's go like to one with the amount. So the amount is just, again, how big of a chamfer or a bevel am I looking to have for this, right? So if I turn low polygon mode back on, you'll see how well that works here. And again, this was with a relatively pretty low surface, and now it has a better understanding of how it's going to work within this. And so this was being used automatically with that last mesh because we're gonna analyze your mesh when it comes into Bevel Pro, and if it needs low polygon mode, if you wanna use chamfering, we're gonna automatically turn it on for you. If, but you can turn it on and off. Right, this is really gonna be useful the most only for chamfer. For bevel, you don't need it. It's only for when you wanna create a chamfering effect. And as you can see, it's not even available when you go to bevel. It's only gonna be available when you go to that chamfering, okay? And then I can even say instead of auto apply, right, this is again going back to the surfaces of the mesh. Okay, and then if I say okay, this is gonna come back in the ZBrush, all right? And then you're gonna see the results in here, but what this has done now, it's created subtools that of the meshes that Bevel Pro is creating. Okay, so you can see there is the inner surface there that's actually creating the chamfering. And you can see that's got triangulation. So in this case, there's quads outside, but do you want quads in here is why we're now giving some of those other advanced options. Okay, so to give it kind of just another idea, just so you guys have, again, another visual idea. This is what I like to call a non-destructive way of working, where I didn't apply the items to this mesh. And I told Bevel Pro, give me the geometry that you're creating to create the chamfer or to create the bevel, one of the two options in here. Again, so if I turn, go back to this, and let's just turn these off, right? So this is really what the mesh looks like inside a ZBrush. And then Bevel Pro just brought in brush meshes that were additive and subtractive because there's convex and concave for this particular example, right? And so if I throw again back to Bevel Pro, 
which again, you need to understand here is the process that you're working on. So in this case, what if I had a mesh that was subdivisions levels? Okay, so I would not want to turn on the auto apply. Now in this case, I might not be worried. I just want this surface to look like this inside of ZBrush now. I want this cubic look to have these nice chamfered edges through there. So now because auto apply is on, I hit okay and then boom, that's what I get inside of here, okay? And then now the difference here is, here I'll turn off the live booleans. These two surfaces, I don't even need them because I've already got my result here. And then you can see what we're getting through here. So the reason why you wanna understand that is if let's take another example like this. Yes, beautiful, gorgeous. Like this is just a crazy mess right now. It's a mess because I used live booleans to make this, okay? And here, well, let me change material so it's brighter for all of us. Maybe there you go. Okay, and right now, this is a walkie-talkie that has actually camouflage on it. And the camouflage I'm using is coming from, believe it or not, our surface noise. So I'm using surface noise to give this camouflage look there, right? So in this case, why I'm saying you got to understand a little bit what you're going to do with Bevel Pro. If I want to now take... Again, this, I'm going to take this, the main piece. I'm going to send that main piece over, okay, to Bevel Pro once again. So I'm going to throw it over. And what this is looking at, once again, are all the polygrouping that is on this particular piece through here. So for this, that amount is too big. So again, this is the advantage of having Bevel Pro now. I can say, okay, well, the bevels are huge for this particular mesh. So I'm gonna come back here to my amount and I prefer to quickly first, let me see what kind of bevel amount I actually need through here, right? So you get up close, seeing what I want and you can see the bevel amounts now happening through here, all right? So I can say something like 0.1 and see what that's going to look like. And again, you can even change the colors, excuse me, of all these bevel amounts if you want to. And I can keep going back and forth all right, so you have display colors through here, right? So if I want the mesh physically to be a different color, I can, right? You've got your edge color, which is where the polygroups. You've got your amount color, which is that pinkish. So if I want it to be green, right? You can see stuff like this. This is your fill, right? So you can change all your colors here if you want to. Now it's just crazy, all right? So in an example like this, because inside of ZBrush right now, I've got the part of the walkie-talkie that maybe I'm still working on other things for it, number one. And number two, I've got camouflage on it, okay? So I'm still not decided if I want to keep that camouflage and things like this. So in this way, I'd prefer not to have this on, okay? I'd prefer to keep it, um, keep the excuse me, the auto apply off and then hit okay. And then let, let Bevel Pro go, okay, so you want the pieces of geometry that I made to come over and be inside a ZBrush. So now you can see everything that's white is the stuff that came over, in essence, the mesh that's coming over from Bevel Pro. And once again, it is just being inserted right below what we've already been making. Right? So this is more of a non-destructive way. And the reason, again, why I like this is, okay, I got this walking. And as an example, instead of in this scenario, okay, I don't even want this, okay? I want maybe a different color even, right? So we're going to go, I don't know, we'll go a nice orange. In fact, let's, let's take the orange inside of ZBrush. There we go. Pick that out, right? And I'm going to say RGB, color, right? And I'm going to say fill object. Okay, and then I'm gonna take this one, color, fill object. So the two meshes that came over from Bevel Pro have a completely different color. They can have different material. So that's what Bevel Pro with the auto off is opening up for me is a non-destructive way of being able to work in this scenario where I've got this walkie-talkie that I'm working on, okay? So this is 
some th few things that we've done for, again, for this patch, which is going to be 2022.0.3. And again, this is going to be available to all registered users. And I guess you guys aren't going to want to be knowing when is this available. This is going to be available to you by the end of the day. So by the end of the day, you guys are all going to be able, if you're currently running ZBrush, this is in this case, 2022, you're going to upgrade, I'm sorry, update to 2022.0.3, okay? And if you're not currently running 2022, then you'd want to go get the most recent installer, which in this case is now going to be the 2022.0.3 for you, all right? And if you're not aware of um, how to do this, let me uh, just show you really quickly and briefly what you're going to want to do for those that are, excuse me, my throat is going out today, that are using ZBrush, okay? I'm just going to, on my other screen, I'm getting to, into this. Okay, so when you are, if you're running 2022, okay, you are going to want to use in here, there's the Z upgrader at the bottom. Okay, so you're just going to want to run that. And then ZBrush will find the update and update for you. Okay, and again, ZBrush itself will tell you there's now a new update. If you're not currently running 2022, then you want to go download 2022 from your license files, right? So in my licenses is where you'd want to go, okay? So that sounds great to you all. So again, this is a patch. It'll be 2022.0.3, which will be available to you by the end of today. And again, just launch your ZBrush. And if you're already running 2022, the upgraders, the fastest way to go. And for those that also, I get this, sometimes people asking this question, you can actually install 2022 and still have 2021 installed, 2019, 2020. 2022 is installations, all separate folders. Okay, so 2021 and 2022 can be on your system. Obviously, what you're doing is just eating up more hard drive space. That's all you're doing. Okay? So there you go. So there, again, there's some things that we have. We've had some things that there, there are some more items we'll be sharing with you guys when the update comes available, what else has been um, fixed within this patch. But I wanted to take the time to show you some of the uh, other things that have been fixed throughout the patch here for you. And make sure you guys know that this is going to become available available to you today. So that's it. That's all I have. Uh, I Thanks for tuning in. Oh, yes. And uh, joining me for another stream here on the ZBrush Live channel. Okay, and I encourage you to, if you're a hard surface person, I would really look into that Bevel Pro because it is a big one for me, especially since I'm also a big live Boolean person. So it comes in really handy. All right, so keep an eye on us on our channels and our social media. I thank you all for watching me. Again, this is Paul Gabry with ZBrush Live, and I look forward to seeing you online. And I am out. Bye.